hello everyone. I'm going to talk to you about the five axis as it applies to turn mill and what we have to offer. I'm going to show you a few different uh, controls that you may not even be aware of um, that have been in feature cam for for a long time with the uh, three axis surface milling and turning them into five axis tool paths. So we'll take a look at a few of the strategies just kind of give you an overview of what's here. So what we see on this is a part where the it's been roughed out and it's ready for some finish machining. And I have a few different examples of how you might do some of these areas. The first area I'm going to focus on is in this center area. And there's a conical shape in here. This is this feature right here. And if you take a look, you might be able to see the conical shape, a little bit of a taper in here. So one of the five axis strategies is a five axis swarf. So a swarf is where you cut with the side of an end mill. And we want to basically keep the side tangent to the uh, walls that it's cutting. In this particular one, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a, a Z increment while we're doing so. So basically, you create a, a swarf, and there's a five axis tab when you're in a five axis document, and it will automatically try to keep that tangency. So let's take a quick look at a preview of this. We'll see the uh, toolpaths being calculated, and then we'll be able to kind of watch it. So we'll take a look at this here, and we'll see see the tool. And um, you can see the toolpath that is appearing here. And it's going to uh, work its way from the top down. Okay, so let's take a look at this in a little bit better simulation. We'll take a look at it in 3D. Uh, run through this particular toolpath right here. So we see it calculate the toolpath. I also have a few other um, options here that are calculating. So we have um, some other machining. We're going to machine this area also with a swarf. And then I'll show you what it looks like when we do the whole part. I want to key on the um, tool and the angle that this is going to achieve. You see that it automatically tilts the tool to keep the tool uh, sides of the tool uh, against the wall. So you can see that pretty easily just by looking at the angle that we're seeing here. And so we see how a swarf works. So a swarf is really good for this type of situation. You don't have to step it down like I am. You can just have it go all the way in and, and uh, go to depth and um, you have all the control you want or you can step it down if you like. All right, let's take a look at this next one right here. This is a five axis swarf here. Okay, same, same type of idea only a little more complex surfaces. So if I show you this feature right here, you can kind of see the outline. We're doing this area right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and single step that for you and kind of show you this. This is using a little bit different tool, smaller ball mill in this case. And you can see the nice uh, tool path motion that we get. At the end, however, it tips over um, a fair amount. Let's re let's rewatch that. Okay, so I'm going to deactivate that um, patterned one and we're going to take a look at this one more time and I want you to watch at the end how how the uh, tool will tilt over quite a bit and we want to talk about how we can limit that so there's quite a bit of tilt as it comes out on that so I want to kind of limit that is is the goal so inside of our five axis um, features when you find the five axis tab in your process you're able to set a tool axis limit and so um, the settings for elevation and azimuth come into play. Um, in this case, elevation is the one I want. I'm just going to basically allow it to go from vertical, which is 90, to tilt either side of vertical by 25 degrees. So you do the math and you get 65. Okay, so we can take a look at that in a nice preview and get a, an idea what that looks like. And then I'll show you the part being machined with the five axis um, all of these and I'll actually show you a machine simulation of this with a b-axis head um, because that's essentially a five axis machine so you see that tool stayed a little more vertical in that area um, and was able to do that so that's how tool axis limits work uh, I'm going to show you a few other things in in some other examples but let's take a look at a finished result of this and I'm going to actually show it to you with a machine simulation I've got loaded in here and so you can see the part see the b-axis head see the turret okay so this is um, just kind of a stripped down version of a machine let's just go ahead and uh, remove some of this extra stuff and we'll just watch 
watch what we want to see and slow it down and we'll run through it and you can see all the motion that's happening in that in that head to do that five axis and I patterned that six times so I only had to create it once work out my settings and then I was able to pattern it around the uh, index axis and so that's a nice nice one with the swarf and showing you the capabilities feature cam has for the five axis machining okay on to the next part okay so we have a another example this one is going to machine this area here i'm just doing one of the fins in this this time and so we're going to machine this kind of gray area and so what i've got is a z level um, finish so that's good for steep areas it has a five axis tab and i have the uh, lead and lean turned on so lead means to tilt the tool forward or backwards depending on the angle you place in there along the travel direction of the tool lean is leaning over to the side so sideways so i'm saying from my vertical orientation lean over 10 degrees and so i have have this z level we're using a short carbide ball let's say three eighths kind of a stubby tool and so we want to just kind of see how that works so I'll preview this for you and we'll see the um, motion that we get and it's kind of going a little bit quick for us just because it's not uh, slowed down all the way but you can see all that motion in there based on on that okay so there is a good chance we could collide and as if you use feature cam you know that center line doesn't do the collision checking however if we do a 3d simulation you'll notice that it will collide I have the the uh, pop-up that would pop up on the screen disabled just just so it does doesn't get in the way but it will pause on the simulation I still have that or excuse me pause on the collision I still have that active so you can see the nice motion you can see and you can imagine that in that b-axis head of that machine that I showed you earlier <clears throat> and you can see that it um, is avoiding collision because I've I've basically introduced a lean into that that tool path. Okay, so that's what lead and lean is is uh, doing for us. Let's take a look at um, collision avoidance. So this is a similar tool path, Z level. The five axis this time is locked at vertical, but I'm going to tell it stay vertical. But I want you to also choose one of these methods to avoid the uh, gouges. So it's called gouge avoidance or collision avoidance. And so I can do any one of these, any number of methods here. I'm going to simply tell it to lean. Oh, excuse me, lean. We don't. I don't specify an angle. If I hit apply and go look at, look at the actual setting, you'll notice that I have some values I can set right here. So I, whoop, I can do. All right, there. Holder clearance, so that's going to keep the holder whatever value away I want from the uh, collision, and also the shank, and I can specify whatever value I want. You can see I have 30 set for the shank, 100 set for the um, holder, and let's just watch this one without doing anything else. I'm going to go ahead and simulate that, and you'll notice that pretty quickly it just goes straight into leaning automatically whatever it needs to in order to avoid the collision so let's just take a look at this and watch this and you can see if i slow it down for you a little bit i'm just kind of run it this way you can see that it's tilting tilting the tool um, and you can see that that tilt that it's doing to avoid that so that's what that tool path is doing just simply by turning on the gouge avoidance and giving it my preference. Okay, so that's another thing that's um, in the five axis that also comes in the turn mill if you have, have that type of um, B axis machine that can do that. Now we have a little bit simpler part, but I have another example of something we might try to do. Okay, so there's a, uh, a ball mill being used in this. This is going to be a Z level, which is one of the tool paths that will actually do undercuts but if I look at the uh, 
the uh, purple area. So let me select that purple area and I'll just hide the rest of this. You can see that there's a nice undercut. So a ball mill is not going to be able to reach in there. So if we if we run just a simple center line on that, you'll see that it doesn't cut very far because it's not able to. So I'll just go ahead and unshade that for everyone. Take a look and you see that it goes down in there. And I've got it set um, to go to the bottom, but it doesn't because that tool cannot physically get in under there. So you could say, well, turn on lean or something. Yes, those are certainly options we could do. But let's look at one of the other options we have, just one of them. There's actually quite a few other other methods, as we call them. So if we go to the Z level and 5 axis, we see that we did vertical. We've And then I did the collision avoidance on the other one. Um, I haven't talked about fixed, but that, that basically just setting it at a specific ang angle you want using vectors. And you can just lock it there and it, it never changes the angle. Um, as we talked about lead and lean, but there is an other method. So if I were to show you um, this one, one of, one of the methods is to go from a point. And what that means is I want the tool to spin around the tool axis or through a point towards the surfaces. So I have actually two points created out here. So they're just simple geometry points. And I'm going to show you with the lower one, which is point two, how what this looks like. So all I did was basically draw a point at the center of it so it can spin around that point. And then we'll watch the uh, tool path now. It's the exact same tool. You can see it's able to reach under under there. Now I did limit the bottom just because I I didn't want to simulate the whole whole thing during this presentation. So I did use a Z end in there, but it would have um, reached under there um, if I had long enough reach if I hadn't done that. So you can see how that that works. Okay. So if you look at the angle of the tool though, you'll notice that it is um, quite pronounced on that um, tilt that it's doing. Okay, so if I choose a point further up, that'll get the tool a little more vertical, which may suit my needs. So now I'm using this higher point. And if I preview this for you, you'll see the tool is a little more vertical while still doing the rotation um, from that point towards the surfaces that we're machining and we get that result. So I hope you uh, enjoyed what I've shown you here. Basically, I'm trying to show you that there's um, a lot of five axis control with your turn mill. If you have a machine that's capable of it with the B axis head, then this is um, a, a solution um, that you could do to, to program your machines. So thanks for joining me and um, we'll hope to see you in a future session.